I'm Tommy Thomas. I want to welcome you back to this show, How to Beat the Odds. As usual, I'm excited about my guest, Kelly Sasser. Known her dad for many years, her mom. They got divorced when she was about eight or ten years old. It was a difficult time for her. But she's going to share her testimony and, and how God came into her heart, Jesus came into her heart and totally changed her life. You know, people that don't know Jesus, that are truly not born again, the Bible said in Corinthians, to the natural man, it's foolishness. It doesn't make sense. But when you get a new heart, when Jesus comes to live inside of you, all of a sudden you have spiritual discernment on spiritual things. And all of a sudden the Bible comes alive and the Word of God. And it's not about trying to prove it wrong and this is right and this is wrong. It's a book of God speaking to us. And His anointing, He anointed men and women of God to speak out in this Bible, to share their stories and what they went through. And all of them were messed up in one way or another. But God still used them because it says in the Bible, God will take the foolish things to shame the wise and the weak things to shame the strong. Why would God do that? I'll tell you why. So he gets all the glory. Because we know when people look at me, an old gambler and all, what's he doing on that television set talking about Jesus? Because Jesus gave me a brand new heart. I don't care anything about gambling anymore. He did it. Not me choosing to do it. Not my will to be in the ministry and all of a sudden go do these things for the Lord. He calls us. He calls us out of the world into his world. A loving world where he loves us no matter what. And when we get a hold of the love of God and the love of Jesus, it changes us. Because when we know he loves us that much in spite of who we are, who we've been, or what we've done, he loves us anyway. He died for us anyway. He hung on that cross and said, all that junk you do, just give it all to me. I'll take care of it, and I'm going to give you all the blessings. What an awesome deal. That's the God that we serve and the Jesus that we love because he first loved us. Well, let's say hello to Kelly Sasser right now. Kelly, welcome to How to Beat the Odds. Good to see you, Tommy. Well, I hadn't seen you in a while, but I remember years ago, first time I'd see you, your mom and dad got divorced. What, were you eight years old back then? About eight years old, yeah. And there was a bank building, and your mom worked in the bank over in Dallas. And at the holidays, she'd call me, and we'd come play tennis and all. But then I'd go by the bank, and what would I see? I was singing. You were singing away. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. could really sing. Well, um, at the time, I um, you know, didn't know that... God had put that gift in me for, for His purpose, but from the time I was about two years old, I just had a, a great love for music, and um, that's just the way that I express myself, and I can't help but want to sing and, and write music and play music, so um, all growing up, that's, that's pretty much all I did. Well, now you're writing songs for the Lord. You're a psalmist. He gives you songs. You're doing praise and worship, but when that divorce happened, that was difficult, wasn't it? Very. Um, divorce, you know, God hates divorce. It's, and it's very traumatic for families and children. Um, and, you know, I was, I was raised uh, pretty much just, just my mom around. You know, I, ha I have a relationship with my dad, but um, I, I only saw him, you know, when I would travel to, to, to where he lived, you know, once or twice a year. And um, so growing up uh, without a dad was hard. Um, my mom did a great job raising me. Your mom um, really but, loves you. <laughs> yes. But um, when I was about 12 years old, um, I was at a friend's house, and she talked to me about um, going to heaven and, you know, said, say this prayer with me, and you can go to heaven, and, and kind of explain things to me. But at the time, I, you know, I viewed it as um, like a golden ticket into heaven. Um, it really wasn't about um, really giving my life to Jesus or submitting to Him um, as my Lord, but rather just, um, it was almost like it set up an idol. Um, well, all of a sudden you could go do what you want and knew you right. were still going to heaven. Right. I was told the same thing when I was 19 and walked an aisle, and I believed Him. But I went on and gambled for 32 years, did right. all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, I, I went on um, like it was nothing and continued to live my life. And um, because of uh, a lot of the, I think, the pain of my, of my childhood and, and the divorce and things like that, um, I had uh, a lot of problems come up through adolescence, a lot of depression. Um, I started 
um, befriending the wrong crowd, looking for acceptance, um, had a huge void, empty void, and um, looking, you know, to fill it um, with the acceptance of man and um, looking to um, fill it with drugs, alcohol. Um, so how old were you when you started doing the drugs and the alcohol? I started experimenting, you know, when I was about 14 or 15, my, my friends had it and um, I, you know, I never was a, a big addict, but it was just, you know, something that... They were doing it, so you do it, and all of a sudden you just fit in when you do it. Exactly. Um, I struggled mostly with depression and rebellion. Um, you know, I, I would often um, go through severe depression. Suicide ever entered the picture? I never attempted it, but there was, there was t thoughts from time to time of not wanting to to go on, um, just, you know, lock myself in a closet and, and you know, just brooding and, and listening to really dark music and cutting myself with razors and... Dark music plays a big part in that, doesn't it? It really does. There, there are spirits behind every piece of music that's composed, you know, and um, I think that, that a lot of that um, affected the way I was thinking. But when sure. you hear that over and over again, and there's a lot of demonic music and all, all of a sudden, man, you want to destroy yourself or other people. I mean, it gets a hold of you. That's right. Um, I went on and, and, you know, started to try to get my life together on my own. On your own? Um, you know, got, got different kind of friends and... I remember the White Supremacist. What was that about? Oh, well, yeah, that was, that was still during that time. You know, just always going through, through, through different phases and changing on the outside, trying different things. One of the things that I tried was um, this, you know, group of people that, that were right, white supremacists. You know, I uh, was just full of But your heart was never there. Hatred. You never hated ever the races. No, I, I, was just, I was just looking for a place to sit, to fit in and... Um, you know, it was it was just a, a a time of rebellion and and trying to be cool. So how did you get out of that phase? And you were trying to make the pieces work. What I were just, you doing? Honestly, it just got old. It was like, okay, this isn't working. This isn't filling me up. So what's next? Okay, you know. So you went to college. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, college and you know got cleaned up on the outside, so to speak. Um, joined a sorority. Um, but then I started partying, doing the, the college binge drinking thing, and um, still just totally focused on myself, um, on my own ambition. And um, I, all, all of these years, I would occasionally go to church and occasionally read my Bible. Um, but it was like it was a... Um, it was a Sunday thing, or it was like, you know... Like I said, it was I'd set up an idol like like Jesus. I'd made him what I wanted him to be instead of I was like perverting the truth. You know, I I didn't want to to yield or so surrender. Who he wanted you to be. Exactly, um, and there was no internal change at all. You know, I was just trying to to play the part of the Christian. Well, a lot of people go to college thinking they're going to find their husband or wife. Did you think that? Uh, I guess so. You know, it. I I just kind of um, met someone, and the and the first person that came along, it was like, okay, well, this makes sense. Let's do this. This was SMU um, in Dallas. Right. Um, yeah, that was you know, completely out of God's will. So it was a disaster. Didn't work out. Um, I graduated college and went on. Um, you know, through several years of looking again to fill that void looking for, really focusing on career, looking for, you know, um, what, I, what a purpose, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I just continued to um, look for, you know, fulfillment in my own, my own will, my own self, looking for... Different careers, Different jobs, careers. Like I must that. have changed jobs four or five times during those years. You tried a lot of different things. I definitely was trying. Uh, looking, looking for fulfillment in all the wrong places. Well, I know Jesus came into the picture, and we're going to talk about that in the second half of the show. But you're doing our praise and worship in this show. Yes. You and David. Yes. And tell our viewers a little bit about the song that you're doing. The song is called Have Your Way. Okay. Um, it's written uh, basically from a standpoint of God, I'm yours. Do what you want with me. Um, this is 
my life is yours, not mine. That's the place we all have to get to, yes. isn't it? Well, we're going to listen to it and we'll come back and talk about how Jesus took over in your heart. We'll be right back after the praise and worship. I woke up this morning with your name on my tongue. The peace like a blanket when cold winter comes. And my heart beats in time with the rhythm of you. There's a fire in my soul. I'm thirsty for you, oh God. Your voice calling my name in the dark. You said, precious child, I still have my heart. And now I surrender my life under you. Your blood washes over me, making me new. Oh God, have your way, have your Welcome back. I've been talking to my guest, Kelly Sasser. We just heard her sing a song. She's a psalmist now. The Lord gives her songs. What an awesome ministry she's doing right now in praise and worship. We shared a little bit about her story. I knew her dad. They got Mom and dad got divorced when she was eight years old. Like so many young people went through that rebellion stage, got into a lot of junk and stuff like that. Went to SMU, an awesome school. Met her husband, got married. Wasn't a God plan. Didn't work how to search in different jobs and things. Well, that's where we left it, so let's pick it up now. All right, you look for different jobs, trying to fill that emptiness, trying to make it work. You had been talked about Jesus. Someone told you you were going to heaven, but it didn't take, did it? No, not at all. And I was, you know, confessing to know God, but denying Him by my deeds. Churches are full of people that believe they have a relationship and don't. Absolutely. Um, but... Um, God has a way of, of, you know, bringing us to brokenness and, yes, he and does. what happened. Um, you know, I got to a point where I was just so focused on my own will that I was just making uh, really, you know, poor choices, just living out of my flesh and um, ended up in a relationship last year that, that um, was really, really bad and unhealthy. And through that, um, I came to complete dependence, you know, I, I finally said, I don't want anything 
to do with myself. Um, I was I was hurting and in pretty much a prison, you know, like chains were on. Um, and um, I got the courage to to just say, you know, I've I've had enough of this. And um, I asked him, you know, um, I asked him to to be the Lord of my life. And it was at that point, you know, that that everything changed. Um, Where because, were you when that happened? Um, I I was I was I had come home. Uh, from a vacation, and uh, you know, some some bad things had happened, and um, I was really just. Um, you were fed up and broken, weren't fed you? Fed up and broken, and and full of fear and despair. Um, you know, looking looking, staring at the face of like everything, um, being about to be. I could you know lose everything, basically. Um, yeah. And I had to either make a decision to either um, trust in him or try to fix it myself. Well, I'd I'd tried you know, my whole life <laughs> to fix know. it myself, and yeah. you know, that had gotten me nowhere. So um, I made the the choice to to yield to him, and um, you know, um, we have to die to ourselves before we can live. Um, Paul says in Galatians, you know, he talks about being crucified with Christ so that, that he can live in us. Right. It's not I that live, but and Christ had, lives in me. Yeah. I had never died. You know, I'd always been um, hanging on. You wanted to be in control. I wanted to be in control. But then I came to a point where, where I let go of that. And it wasn't until then that um, he could step in and, and do something in me. Um, but the moment that I did... Um, you know, he's faithful and, and he's true to his word and he does change you completely. All of a sudden, all of the desires that I had changed. Um, all the junk you didn't want to do. Gone. Chains gone. broken off. Um, wow. Depression lifted. Um, joy came in. Joy came in. Absolutely. Um, and it's important that you, you, you turn your back on everything first. You know, I remember many years you know, of, of wanting to, for something to change, but I wasn't willing to, to let go first. It starts on the inside. Yeah. Um, Philippians 3.8 says, um, I count all things but loss for the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Um, it's not I, I count them as loss, it's, or it's not I win Christ and then count them as loss. Right. You know, it's yeah. I let go of everything first, I count it all as garbage, and then I can be one with Him. Well, He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So we can let go and let God, and we don't have to do it because all we got to do is yield to Him. And all the stuff that we had, all the Harley Davidsons and stuff that I had on, it doesn't make any difference. It's all about walking with Him and His plan for our life. That's the right. junk's just not important anymore. The stuff's not important anymore. The, the love of your life, of a, a, a relationship with somebody, just doesn't matter unless God's in it. I had been basically waking up every day of my life before that and saying, uh, you know, what, what's my agenda for today? What's on the menu for today? You know, I want um, a main course of, of um, an ambitious career, with maybe a little family on the side and... A little notoriety um, or fame. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, you eat from that menu, you're going to be hungry the yeah. rest of your life. Right. Yeah. Um, that God-shaped hole, he's the only one that can fill it. And when he does, you want what he wants for us. That's right. That's so awesome. And you try to tell people that. And, you know, I mean, your dad, I talked to him about when I became a Christian and all. And he said, well, Tommy, you've always been good at doing stuff. and You always land on your feet and you know how to make things work out and everything. Well, he thinks that I put the ministry together and I did it. And what he doesn't really realize is I totally let go of everything I had and said, all right, it's all you, God. Right. Whatever you want, I want. And God put it all together. And people that don't have that relationship in their natural mind can't comprehend that. But when Jesus comes in here and he lives inside of you, all of a sudden spiritual things, you have discernment and it speaks to your heart. And it doesn't matter in your mind because in your heart you know how real he is. And that's what's important. That's right. 
a TV show and all that stuff. As long as he wants us to do that, we'll do it. He says, don't do it. We'll just keep going into prisons, jails, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, all of a sudden I wanted nothing to do with myself. Yeah. I, I wanted, you know, because I had let go of, of the world, my own will, now he could, you know, do something. And um, I, I, all of a sudden I just wanted to purge everything that was not of God. You know, and that's that's because he changed. He was. I allowed him to change my heart and my desires. You know. Um. Then the music becomes his, because he's the one that gave you the gift. Yes. So all the junk's not blocking it. It's coming out for him now. Yes, and it is coming out. Um, Fifteen songs abundantly. in one weekend or something. You told me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, he's he's been good in in um, really using that, and because I let him, you know, I, I yielded that to him and said it's it's your gift, not mine. And you know, I've been writing music all my life, but not like this. It just um, flows now, doesn't it? It does. The main thing is, Tommy, that I've never been happier in my entire life. You know, there's <sighs> everything that that I was living for before. You know, it it meant it was it was like like Paul said, garbage. Right. And um, and you want this I for wake, everybody, don't I you? I know. I wake <laughs> up every day with such a purpose and such a joy, and you know, there's no burden. He breaks every yoke of bondage. Yes, yes. Well, what really makes this work for all of us, once we make Jesus our Lord and really give it up to Him, is when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. You received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and didn't really know what it was, did you? No, I didn't, because I had never. I've uh, been familiar with, with any of that stuff in the times um, before that I had gone to church, visited churches, whatever. Um, they weren't spirit-filled churches. I wasn't exposed to any of that. So um, when it happened, um, I, had, I had gotten water baptized, and then I came home that night in my apartment. I was praying on the floor, and I just suddenly felt the presence of God just in an overwhelming way and um, you know, began praying in a language that, I didn't understand, um, and then I asked friends about it, and you know they explained what it, what it was and everything. But um, you know it it was just that was an amazing experience, and um, that has has really you know changed. Well, that's a, a heavenly language between you and God, right. and He blessed you with that language because it just happened to you when you were by yourself. He wanted you to have it that much. Isn't it awesome how much he loves you? Yeah, it is. And you don't have to go look for love in the wrong places anymore because he's the right place. Every single day he fills me up. You know, it. He he promises that that you know living water yes. will be bubbling. You know, life springs. Rivers of living water will flow out of your innermost being. Um, and, and that's and to it's give true. away. And it's true. It's not just words. Um, it's not just words. It's really and religion true. doesn't have it. No. It's only a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only thing. You know, yeah. you can go for, for many years and, um, you know, play church. And um, I might as well have been, you know, praying to a poster of Jesus. I had no idea who he was, right. um, you know, on a personal level until I, I, I made him my Lord. I said, you know, I'm, I'm yours. You, you want Jesus to be real to you. You've got to be real with him first. Kelly, we're going to close our show out with another song that you've done. And the name of it? It's Beautiful Dependence. Okay. I want you to look at your camera, talk to the viewers about the song, and uh, we'll just pray that they'll get touched like you did. Okay. The song is about um, coming to a place of complete and total dependence on Him. You might be sitting there um, like I was when I wrote this song, um, looking at a dark valley ahead of you, you don't know what, what to do or, or you know, have any idea what's coming next. Um, and that's when you reach out and completely depend on Him instead of your own will. Awesome. And He will deliver you. All right, now if people want to hear your music, they can go to where? www.myspace.com forward slash Kelly Sasser Music. I'll put that graphic up. I want to thank you for being on our thank show. You. And we're going to close it out. Also, you can email me at Tommy at HowToBeatTheOz.com. Go to the website, HowToBeatTheOz.com. Call the number at the end of the show. My wife, Latrice, and I would love to pray for you. We're closing it out now with Kelly and David. God bless you. Thanks for watching our show. Many years of pain and I'm convicted of this shame. 
But I will find myself in this predicament. Broken down and emptied out, but somehow I'm made a servant out of it. Yes, somehow I'm made a servant out of it. In the valleys dark and white, as you carry me. darkest hour I am filled with the power that has raised me up and made me new that has raised me up and made me new 